Hello Aquarius and welcome to remote learning day number five. We are going to follow the same format as Monday as we do have the school assembly at the end of the day. We have our four different teams links set up at 9, 11.40, 1 and 2.40. We will then finish the day off as I said with the assembly at 2.45. After we have checked in with one another at nine o'clock, we will then complete our English and maths work, which is explained on the PowerPoint. This morning for English, you will need the persuasive speech strip of paper to work from the same one as yesterday. And in maths, you will need the white rose worksheet this time called subtracting with two four digit numbers with only one exchange. And then you will need access to the white rose video online. There is an extension for maths on the PowerPoint as usual. We will group back together at 11.40 and mark our maths daily practice, our maths worksheet answers and go through the English work together. After lunch today, we will read the class story together and then have our science activity to complete our spellings task and then task and then an active fun PE session, all of which are on this PowerPoint. We will group back together at 2.30 to have our discussion about science spellings and our PE and then at 2.45 we will join the rest of the school on the whole school assembly. In English we are continuing our drafting lesson from yesterday. In school you would have had two days to concentrate hard and complete this so I'm giving you the same amount of time at home to do this. Remember this would have been our independent write week where I assess your writing so far this term and then work with you to see how we can improve it moving forward into the rest of the year. So please, as I said yesterday, do not rush this and try your absolute best. Remember, our task is to draft our own persuasive speech as the colour that you created on Friday with the aim to hopefully win the crayon colour a place in the crayon box. You will need to use your persuasive techniques in your writing and the strip should help you with this. We did learn about these on Monday, so if in doubt and you're questioning yourself or you can't remember, please flick back to Monday's work. As yesterday, this slide shows you the structure of the letter. It's very simple if you do follow this strip as shown here. I have helped you on this slide by breaking it down step by step. Once you think you have completed it, each box, tick it so that you know that you have done it and you know which, you haven't, which parts you haven't done. Here is a list of all the grammar and punctuation you should be thinking about and using in your letter. Please refer to this when you are writing and tick things off once you have checked at the end you have used them all as you go along. When writing your draft speech, as I said yesterday, please make sure to write on every other line so that when we do our editing lesson tomorrow, you have room to add in sentences, take out sentences, add in words, change words, correct your spellings. Our brain break activity for today is to complete the fun activity, Would You Rather? We will then share our responses in the morning feedback session. Please complete the daily practice for maths on a scrap piece of paper as you have done on Monday and Tuesday and we will then mark these answers together during our morning feedback session. In maths today we are focusing on subtracting two four digit numbers with only one exchange. You will need to watch the white rose video on the link provided and complete the white rose worksheet that goes along with it. There is a picture of this on the slide if you are confused. Once finished, please take a photograph of your work and send it to me via Microsoft Teams and we will go through the worksheet and the extension answers during our morning feedback session. Like science last week, we were going to be completing this science lesson practically in school. Our focus is gears and pulleys. Obviously, we cannot be in school to practically explore these so I have put together a couple of video links to help us explore and understand fully what they are. Now our aims are to understand how a pulley system makes a load lighter to lift and to understand that a small force can have a greater effect. Now on the, a couple of slides time there is a matching activity. You do not need to write any of this down, it is simply for you to figure out what pictures are an example of a gear a pulley and a lever. So you will need to refer to last week's learning on levers. I promise you, once you have watched the videos, it will all make sense. We are going to discuss this together at our afternoon feedback session and see what answers we have got. So what are gears? 
Gears are wheels with teeth around the outer rims. As one gear turns, its teeth push against the teeth on the other gear wheel, pushing it around. If the first gear wheel is turning clockwise, then it will push the second gear wheel in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise. So the wheels are usually different sizes so that one gear speeds up to slow down the next gear. Gears are also used to change the direction of movement. So gears, you can see on the screen we have the driver gear going to the left and the driven gear or the follower going to the right. So the driver gear, this is the gear which the effect force is applied. So this gear drives the mechanism. Then we've got the follower gear, it is slightly smaller. You can see that they interlock together, they're meshed together. It is then connected to the driver gear. And then the output, we've got the force movement. So this is the outcome of what happens. So the last driven or the follower gear, the force movement is produced from this. So what are pulleys? Pulleys are like gears, but the two wheels do not lock together. So instead, the wheels are joined by a belt. Pulleys can be used to change the speed, direction or force of a movement. Now, if you think back to when we was in school, where you eat your lunch in the big hall, at the top there we have the climbing apparatus. Now, after the half term, we are going to go in there and we are going to look because there is a pulley system that makes these apparatus go out and in. So after half term, remind me, we are going to go in the hall and see a pulley system live in action. In spellings this week, we are focusing on 10 of the statutory year five and six spellings. Now you should all have a copy of all of these year five and six spellings at home, as these were given out on week one of this term. It is a sheet that has a pink heading. For today's spelling task, you need to look at what these 10 words have in common. You need to say them aloud, breaking them up to help you remember where the consonants are. Remember, consonants are letters that aren't vowels, so they're not an A, an E, an I, an O or a U. Please copy these words onto a piece of paper, writing these double consonants in a different colour to stand out. This will help you remember how to spell the words. These will be the 10 spellings that we will be tested on on Friday the 6th of September when you come back to school. Please see the separate homework sheet to practice your spellings on. There is a picture if you do not know what the sheet looks like on this slide. The four of you who normally work with Mrs Place for spellings, I will give you 10 separate spellings to work on to practice over half term ready for Friday the 6th of November when the other the others in the class will be practicing these 10 spellings. I will send these to you on Microsoft Teams on an individual message so, you, so that you can get these 10 spellings and start learning them like the rest of the class. For PE this week, I've tried to jazz things up a little bit to really motivate you to stay active whilst we are off school. So to start with, you need to complete your warm up video as it's important that we warm our muscles up ready for our exercises today. There is a link on the PowerPoint to follow. I have selected seven exercises for you to complete. Please create a table like what I have on this scrap piece of paper, ready to record how many repetitions you can do of that exercise in 60 seconds. You are going to repeat these seven exercises twice. So the first time round, you will get a score. The second time round, you're going to try and improve your score. So for example, squat jumps, let's say you did 31 star jumps on the first time. You're going to try and do 32, 33, 34, really push yourself to improve. This is all about personal challenge, what we've been working on in school. So really challenging ourselves to improve. Now, the table to the right, there is a bronze, silver and gold category. So each time you do an exercise, you will either be in the bronze, silver or gold category. Again, you're going to try and improve this category on your second time through. So for example, squat jumps, let's say you did 11 the first time, you're going to be in the bronze category. You might on the second time get all the way up to 21. So then you'll be in the silver category. Hope that makes sense. On the following slide, I have explained each exercise for you. So you don't need to hand this table in to me. This is all about you improving your score and having fun with PE and staying active. Hello, everybody. I'm going to explain to you the 60 second challenges. You're going to need some water to keep you hydrated. Girls, you're going to need to tie your hair back like I am doing. 
as you're going to get very sweaty and you don't want it to get in the way. First exercise, you're going to come like this, hands planted on the floor, leaning back a little bit, out, in, out, in. This is called our tuck in and tuck out exercise. Don't cheat, please do go all the way back. Your plank, you're going to roll over on your elbows if you can, if not, on your hands, or if that's a struggle, bend down to your knees and hold it there. As many seconds as you can. That is the plank. Mountain climbers, you're going to be on all fours. Lift up, in, out, in, out, in, out. Now with the plank and mountain climbers, I don't want your hips up here. I don't want your hips sagging. So those are mountain climbers. Burpees, make sure that you look up and you're not going to hit the ceiling before you do this. If you are inside, you're going to jump in and jump up. Back down, out, in, up. They are burpees. Now, let me move the camera a little bit for our standing exercises. So, find an object, it can be any object really. I have some chocolate fingers because I don't have a ball. Throw them up and clap whilst they're in the air. See how many of those you can do. You can do it with almost any object as long as it's not breakable. That is your catch and clap exercise. Star jumps, we should all be fantastic at star jumps because we do these in our warm up for PE. So, out, in, out, in. Making sure we are going out. I want to see a big gap. Out, in, out, in. Squat jumps, we should be good at these because it's like our standing long jump exercise. So, bending down, swinging back, and jumping up. Squat jump, up. So from the front, and up. Again, trying to jump as high as we can. Now, good luck with all the exercises. I'm sure you'll do fab. Make sure to record them in the table for me. Have fun. To end our PE session today, you are going to be a yoga teacher. So you're going to use these yoga pose cards on the following slides to come up with your own yoga routine. It must include at least five different poses and you can repeat them as many times as you like. Try and remember it, and then you're going to try and teach a family member when they have time, your yoga routine. So today, the work that you need to hand in to me via Microsoft Teams is your English draft worksheet and your maths worksheet.